Hi, everyone. Um, that was a really uh, fabulous introduction, maybe too fabu fabulous, but um, we are here uh, to talk today. Again, I'm Paula Cuneo. I, I work at Oculus. Um, I'm the Director of Partner and Experience Marketing. Um, I am super proud to have co-founded uh, Oculus VR for Good Creators Lab. Uh, Creators Lab is a program that matches nonprofits and VR filmmakers to elevate stories around causes and people that we believe in. And today we're gonna to talk about one of those fabulous projects that came out of Creators Lab 2.0. Um, the project is called Authentically Us, and it's a, it's a series of short VR documentaries that celebrate um, the transgender peoples. And it's, again, it's a three-part series. And I've got the co-creators here with me, which is really exciting. Uh, they've been on a, a pretty amazing journey together so far. And we're gonna talk about the project, the process, and the the partnership that made it happen. Um, I think we, you know, we got introductions already, but uh, I wanted to start with what we love to use in Seattle as your intro question with everyone, which is, how do you identify, and um, how does how did you bring that identity to the project? Jeremiah, do you want to start? Um, yes, thanks, Paula. Um, so I identify as a transgender man, um, which means I was assigned female at birth, um, but know myself um, to be and live my life every day as a man. Um, I'm also multiracial. I identify as Native American and black, um, and I'm a parent to three amazing teenagers. <laughs> um, and so um, when I really think about uh, what it means to bring my whole identity to the work that I do, um, as a transgender person, a lot of times we um, aren't afforded the ability to be our true authentic selves. Um, in the work that we do, and so um, being able to um, show up as myself um, and be a part of this project and be able to use my expertise of my lived experiences um, in it and be fully embraced um, by the folks that I was working with uh, was a huge part of being able to bring those identities to this project. Yeah, absolutely. Jesse, how about you? Uh, yeah, so my name is Jesse Ayala. I'm a filmmaker and uh, I identify as a gay cisgender man. Um, I grew up in Wisconsin, a place that most people don't generally think is being too friendly to the LGBTQ community, uh, but it's the only state in the nation ever to have, elected, to have two uh, elected officials at the federal level. So sometimes what we expect of this place and what actually is happening on the ground there are quite different. Um, and I think that for me, growing up in that environment as a minority, as a gay person, um, I saw the potential of finding stories for our series in states and places that we generally don't see community with the transgender community or the LGBT community blossoming. Mm -hmm. And I am uh, I identify as gay and also have two amazing kids, so I identify as a parent as well, um, which is really important. I live in Seattle where um, the fight for trans transgender rights and LGBTQ rights are a critical part of our everyday lives, and I think as a parent, being able to work on this project with Forth and the Pride Foundation and Transform Washington has been one of the things I'm most proud to show my kids. Um, in Seattle, we have rainbow crosswalks in uh, the uh, Capitol Hill area, and every time we cross one of those, my kids go, you made a movie about transgender rights. You, you know, that's, that's really great, Mom. And it's, it, there's a lot three of- Three movies. Three movies, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I've made a lot of video games and they think this is more important, so I think we're winning there, for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about representation. Um, was it important to have allies um, when you were creating this project? And did you feel like the transgender community was well represented across these three stories? Yeah, so when I think um, about uh, the importance of having allies, I think more about the importance of access to um, to um, that the folks like transgender folks and um, folks from marginalized communities have to um, media. Um, and so when a, so there's not a lot of representation of transgender people um, doing the work that you do and, and that Jesse does. And so for you all to be able to use your expertise to bring in someone like me um, was really important. Um, and for a project, um, being able to show the diversity of the transgender community, what I think is really important, um, not only with the transgender community, but with all marginalized communities who are trying to be represented in the media, is that there's no one single narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we were able to do uh, a really good job of representing that in the Authentically Us um, series. Um, and so with the three stories that we were able to share, um, we have Shannon Scott, who's from Portland, Oregon. She is not only transgender, but she's a veteran. Um, she works for the Federal um, Aviation Administration and does a lot of um, employment advocacy advocacy work. Um, we have Aiden, who is a transgender person in Idaho, who also identifies as Two-Spirit. Um, they do a lot of um, cultural historian work, and their story is really about um, 
really about um, what it means to be two-spirit, which is a gender-specific um, cultural identity in the Native American community. And then we have um, Acton, who is from Montana, and he is a black transgender man. He's a mechanic, he's an artist, he um, creates lamps and refurnishes um, um, furniture, uh, furniture from um, old uh, materials. And so I think we were really able to uh, do with this project to show that transgender people, just like all of us, um, don't have one specific identity, is that we're created um, with a lot of different identities, um, just like the regular population. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of talk in, you know, in, in the VR community, and we, we ask our filmmakers this every year when we start the Creators Lab Summit, is you know, why do you want to tell this story in VR? Um, and I'll ask Jesse, why VR for this, for this story? What did VR bring to the table that was different than analog filmmaking? Yeah, so I think that the story, um, the three stories that we came up with, uh, and after f interviewing over 100 different people, um, really was that you know, we want to tell something that brings somebody into this person's world, um, not from a position of like, oh, I feel so sad for this person, or, or um, more of a sense of like, wow, this is an empowered person whose story we're getting to see and whose world we're getting to see. And a lot of times in media, I come from a flat media background, you make decisions on what to re remove from the frame. Um, in this piece, we include very intimate parts of their homes, very intimate parts of their workplaces, and you start to see that there is a lot of commonality that would be edited out in a normal video um, that we include in these pieces. Additionally, we live in a, you know, a very digital space um, where media is being produced and put in front of you at an unbelievable rate. Um, some of the clients I work with in flat media, you know, they expect a six second um, amount of attention on something that you've created. For us, we have three films. One of the longest ones, 10 minutes long. That's a thousand times more um, of an opportunity to get a connection with this, the viewer and with this person, and without the distraction of the cell phone buzzing or anything like that. I mean, I've seen so many people in the headsets, in these while watching these experiences, feel it. You can sense that there's something going on in their pocket, but they're focusing on what we're showing them. And I think that that's a very unique place that we have in VR right now. And uh, where have you been, been showing the pieces? Well, we've been showing them in a lot of places. Um, we're showing them after this uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but we've been selected to screen the films at some incredible film festivals, including South by Southwest, Tribeca. We'll be at the American Film Institute later this month, uh, Sheffield, Cannes. Um, we'll be at Facebook HQ tomorrow to launch the Pride Month events for mm -hmm. uh, Facebook. So, you know, we are really focusing on trying to give reach and publicity to the pieces, and then ultimately, in the fall, um, we will be releasing them out on the digital platforms and through the Oculus Store. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a lot of talk in VR, because again, it's, it's really nascent, and there isn't um, huge reach right now. And we talk a lot about distribution. Um, you guys have made a real effort to um, engage with the film community and make sure that you're showing it and getting it as broadly featured as possible. Where else is the, the nonprofit? Where's Pride using it? Um, yeah, so right now we're looking at using it in lots of different media. Um, like Jesse said, Pride Month is getting ready to kick off. Um, and so Pride Foundation is um, based out of Washington State. And so we'll be using the headsets and going across the state to the different Pride fest uh, festivals and events while we're tabling. And we'll be bringing these stories along with us. Um, we're also looking into how we can use um, the, these stories and the virtual reality technology and the policy work that we're doing in educating people. And so how can we use these headsets and um, educate our lawmakers and policymakers by showing them these films and contents and even um, beyond just the policymakers but with our general public. Um, right now we're facing lots of um, anti-trans backlash nationally um, in, including in our state in Washington state and then um, some of the states like Acton, who's in Montana, they're currently facing an anti-trans ballot initiative. So how do we use these stories to engage um, the public and educate them and create more understanding and empathy? And, and how did you guys come upon a common goal? So what was the purpose when you set out? Was it about changing hearts and minds and voting rights? Was it uh, broad awareness? Was it um, a creative endeavor, a combination of those things? I think it was a combination of those things. I mean, I think we ultimately, as a filmmaker, you want to have a piece that actually has an impact, but also is engaged with. And I think with working with Pride Foundation, we found a partner that wanted to use this new technology, experiment with it, and see how they could make change in their communities and then broadly across the country 
Um, I live in uh, Boston and in New York, and we are also facing another anti-trans um, referendum that's coming up in November, and how can we use this in our community to kind of change uh, people's you know, acceptance and also just understanding that the law will possibly be overturned if we don't do anything, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the work that I do with Pride Foundation, um, I'm the project director of Transform Washington, which is our statewide trans public education campaign. And so we do a lot of storytelling using um, the 2D and a picture storytelling campaign. And so when we partnered with you all and Jesse, um, it was really looking at how can we use this new technology to further tell those stories on a new and emerging platform mm -hmm. like we are. And we were talking um, in the speaker room uh, about you know, if you could get one person in to see all three pieces, um, who would that person be and, and why would you choose them? Do you want to answer that first? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, you know, there's a, there's a million people, um, but I think somebody really intimate to the, the characters, their parents, I would love to have them see this because as somebody in a family, um, you know, having a transgender child isn't always necessarily the easiest thing and being able to look at their child from the perspective that we've found them as adults who are empowered and put in a position where they're making change in their communities, I think would be kind of a heartful thing to do. Absolutely. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> um, I think that's so beautiful. I, I definitely don't have like one um, particular person. Um, I, as a transgender person, I guess I just, I just it's so important that we try to figure out ways to share these stories and get it um, into people's um, access. And so I'd really just want to see and think about different ways to be able to use this platform to show, share those stories and get it to a wider variety of mm -hmm. folks. And, and the stories really are um, very, very unique. Unique personalities, unique environments. Do you, is your preference that they get shown together? Because I know they've premiered at different places individually. Is it, is it ultimately, would you like people to sit down for the 30 minutes and, and see them all in, in sequence, or, is, or do they stand on their own as well? Uh, I think that they stand on their own, and I think for us it was trying to give opportunity points. If you're a veteran or somebody in your family is a veteran, maybe the story about the veteran is the one you need to see, because that you have that connection. Mm -hmm. um, and for each of the characters, <laughs> there are many connection points that we provided. Obviously, seeing all three of them, you can walk away having met three people who are trans in virtual reality, which is great. Yeah, I think it's really important in the way that these stories are told is that there are connections to those different identities, like being veteran, being Native American. Um, ideally, I think it would be great for people to see them um, together all the time, just so they can really see the diversity of the trans community, that there's no one narrative of um, who we are as a trans community, that it really is these different identities that make us who we are. It was interesting when we were talking that none of the people that you filmed in, in VR had seen a VR experience before. Um, I know a lot of you have filmed in 360 VR. There's this big circular black camera that sort of We call it the Death Star. The Death Star. It. Yeah, it's, it can look a little bit intimidating. And um, do you want to talk about whether or not you would, would do that again? Would you, sh would you show VR to the, you, the people that were being filmed first, or was it important for them to sort of go in and, and not be so self-conscious around the Death Star? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think most of the people that I've filmed in VR have never seen this camera, or if they've seen a VR camera, it was one of the GoPro ones, or in, in, the cameras are constantly changing the way they look and um, how much sound they make and how invasive they are in the environment. Um, but in terms of the characters seeing them, uh, seeing a VR piece, I don't know if it was necessarily that important for them to have seen it. I, I would, my fear is that they would perform more mm -hmm. if they understood that this was actually capturing their entire environment uh, versus being more of a documentary approach to you know, having them be normal. Um, some of the most beautiful moments I've ever filmed is when they forget that the camera's there and you know, are literally being themselves, mm -hmm. um, authentically being them. <laughs> uh, and I think that you get some sort of rawness that you don't get in other types of media because there is a whole you know, camera setup that it has lights and everything. In VR, you don't have that luxury yet. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much time we have left. You have seven minutes. Seven minutes? Um, OK, so one of the things that I also thought was interesting is um, you, know, you, you, uh, had, you had a number of different stories that you could tell, and you had maybe a dozen that you had selected. How did you guys decide on these three? Did you, and that was a collaborative effort, right? Did you choose those stories? Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, so I think that one of the things that was really important while we were doing this work is thinking about um, not only wanting to um, share these stories, but thinking about the time that we are right now in a society where there is a lot of conversation about transgender people, which is um, really new, that we don't see that in media um, so much, and it's um, really negative. And so taking all of those things into perspective when we're thinking about how, are we, how do we want to share these stories and who, what are those stories um, that we want to tell was really taking in consideration all of those different elements um, of what's happening socially um, into that process. Mm -hmm. When we originally conceptualized, we thought it was going to be a completely POV experience where you are a trans person and you are being discriminated against at a variety of different places, from airports to bars, on dating sites. And then we thought more and more about that concept. And we realized that it was more important to show people who are trans so you get to see them versus being the the hypothetical that I'm this person who's being discriminated against. Um, so the whole project kind of shifted gears when we started the um, test, but also like figure out that that wasn't the exact story we wanted to tell. Yeah, I think it was really important to move away from that narrative because I think a lot of times when we do hear about transgender people in the media, it's about them being victimized or right. being some type of villain. And so really moving away from that um, victimization um, and to just really showing the experiences of these people. That's really important. And how, how is it being received so far? Have you had uh, a lot of uh, positive reactions at the film festivals? Yeah, people um, seem to really enjoy it. We've had um, at the film festivals that we've shown it at uh, postcard campaigns so people can watch the piece and then come out and fill out a postcard. And um, I, I didn't think anyone was going to fill these postcards, uh, to be completely honest. Um, having this future technology and then this very analog form of expression. But people stand there for 20 minutes and write story. No, no, can I have another one? I want to fill this out more. Oh, I'm shocked. I think they want to be able to express what they've um, themselves after what they've seen and send it to a congressperson or somebody who's making policy change, which is kind of amazing for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, your point that there's, you know, we're, we're really pushing um, immersive and innovative technology in what we're showcasing, and at the same time, the, the necessity to take action in a really analog way um, and, and share your emotions about it and, and do something about it was, um, was really thought-provoking for us. We were very surprised. We, we put out, um, in every place we showed it, the addresses of um, the leadership, thought leaders, and, and representatives in those states. And people were just flipping through their states and um, writing their representatives. You know, some were writing their moms, and some were writing their brothers and sisters. But it was, uh, it was really beautiful to see people need to engage after the experience, which I think speaks a lot to the medium and, um, and how impactful it is. Yeah, I think also one of the other odd feedbacks that I don't generally get in VR is that all the experiences should have been longer. Mm -hmm. um, and I was kind of shocked by that. And one of the executive producers was like, I've never heard that. <laughs> 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 Most people are like, let's keep it shorter. Like, you know. And so I think because of that, people want to spend more time engaging with these characters. Mm -hmm. It's pretty powerful. So Pride starts uh, tomorrow. How do you guys celebrate? Probably really busy, <laughs> showing films. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'll be at a bunch of film festivals. I'll be in New York for Pride. I'll be, um, I'll, I actually got married last year on the last day of Pride. Congratulations. So thank you. Um, so I'll be <laughs> celebrating my uh, wedding anniversary, which is exciting. Great. And this is the first year that I am bringing my kids along with me to a lot of the Pride festivals. And then also um, with the work that I do tabling, um, they'll be tabling with me at a few of the family Pride festivals as well. That's be excellent. Great. That is awesome. Um, I recommend that you guys get over to the booth and really take a look at these pieces. They're really compelling. And uh, they'll be at a lot of different film festivals and soon on the Oculus Store. Um, so it's a, it's a great time to take a peek before, um, before you leave today. Thank you so much. Thank you.